Hi, okay, so um, my name's John Pierce. I'm a professor at the University of Nottingham and uh, I'm the original creator of PsychoPy. And we're really excited to be able to share this new and exciting tool with you, um, the Pavlovia surveys feature. Better survey support is something that people have been asking for for a while, a while more than once, let's say. And especially recently, it sounds like something that some users have been having rather higher um, invoices or, or quotes for their, their existing survey tools. And so there's been an increased uh, desire for people to, to have surveys built into um, Psychopy and Pavlovia. So I want to say a big thanks to the team that have made it possible. So Alan and Nikita, who you'll probably see a little bit later on in questions, um, they've done uh, an amazing job in, in bringing in another existing open source tool, so SurveyJS, um, and integrating it and, and extending it a little bit here and there um, to, to um, make those available directly within Pavlovia, but a, but a rich um, existing resource that, that can create some really amazing looking surveys, again, that you'll see in a moment. So they've put in a lot of hours over the last few, few months getting this ready for you. And um, big thanks also to the science team, who, two of whom you'll meet in a moment, uh, uh, Becca and, and Wakefield, um, who have had to do a lot of work in documenting this, making sure that it is polished the way that, that we want it to be and intuitive and works the way they like. And, and also you know, generating demos and, and that sort of thing so that people can get going. I also want to say a big thank you to the users and the institutions who bought credits and site licenses from us. Without those purchases, this wouldn't be possible. Okay, so a big thanks to you as well. Becca's going to talk a bit more about our business model in a, in a moment, but basically the way PsychoPy was written, by me and volunteers in the open source world who have all got other jobs, writing bits of code in between giving lectures and writing grant applications and all that sort of thing. That wouldn't have been possible to add these surveys in the, in the time scale that, that we needed to add them. So um, it has been necessary for us to have permanent full-time staff. Uh, and the modest revenue that we generate from Pavlovia all goes back into doing this. It goes back into adding features like mic recording and camera recording, gamma correction, um, survey tools. So if you think these tools are useful, go out and tell people. Go out and run a seminar in your department. Get us to come and run a, run a seminar for you. We can do that. Go and tell them on social media. The more site licenses we have for Pavlovia, the more we can employ people to develop better tools. And it's just a really critical part of now the way that we're expanding this and, and making these things better. So that was just my little my little shot um, to, to um, get people to keep informing each other and a big thank you to everyone that's involved already. And then I'm gonna pass over to our Chief Science Officer, Rebecca Hurst, to take you through the tools. Okay, great. Thank you very much, John, and thanks for, you know, making PsychoPie. Um, so, hi everyone. As you can probably tell, we are quite excited to present a new tool to you today known as Pavlovia Surveys. So, the goal of this tool is going to be um, a low-cost alternative to creating surveys that you can share with participants and gather responses um, in the browser. So we're hopeful that this will be something that's useful to a great number of you. There's been definite demand for this as people have been asking about it on the forums and things like this. So let's show you today uh, how you do it, what it looks like, um, and yeah, hopefully get you the information that you need. So I'll start, I know John has mentioned a little bit about who we are, but I'll just recap in terms of uh, who we are in terms of open science tools, because this is a name that, is kind of less well known. Open Science Tools is the name of our company. Uh, we're comprised of a team of researchers and developers 
who aim to create these tools for scientists who study behavior. So psychology, linguistics, economics, behavior, um, marketing, business, anything with human behavior, but also animal behavior. We do have uh, lots of animal researchers also that use our tools. We are most well known for PsychoPy, which is the free application for creating and running in lab studies. So this is to run things like reaction time experiments, but also to interact with a range of hardware, including EEG, eye tracking, fMRI, uh, much more, pretty much anything you can interact with through Python, you can interact with it through uh, PsychoPy. More recently, we have become known for pavlovia.org, which is our companion website for hosting experiments in the browser. So this is if you're wanting to conduct remote testing, which uh, a fair number of us have needed to do over the last few years for reasons I don't need to explain. So what you can do within our current framework is you can make an experiment in PsychoPy in the application. You don't need to code it from scratch. You can make it using the app. You can add code snippets if you want. That application then uh, also compiles a JavaScript version of that experiment using our sister library known as PsychoJS. And then that is hosted in the browser on pavlovia.org. So in terms of how our model works at the moment, uh, we have PsychoPy, which to, to be clear is free, always has been free and always will be free. The use of PsychoPy is to make and run in lab studies. The way that this uh, is now possible in a sustainable way is that we have pavlovia.org, which is our low cost, uh, hosting service, which sustains PsychoPy now. So uh, the use of this is to host and share studies in the browser. Enter Pavlovia surveys, which is what we're all here to talk about today. So Pavlovia surveys is actually part of pavlovia.org. In theory, you don't need to download the PsychoPy app at all or touch PsychoPy in order to use Pavlovia surveys. If your research is predominantly using surveys and not running empirical experiments, um, then you can just use Pavlovia surveys, which is very, very different for us, but I think it really opens doors to uh, something that's usable for a range of fields. The use of Pavlovia surveys, as it says on the tin, is to create and share surveys in your browser. I'll show you how we do that in a moment. First of all, I have mentioned the phrase low cost quite a few times. So just to be explicitly clear in what we mean by that uh, up front is that up until January 2023, we have charged 1,500 for an institutional license. So that is for an unlimited number of researchers and an unlimited number of participants across departments. So but economics and psychology and linguistics could all use that license. If your institute doesn't have a license, there's also the possibility of running on credits. So uh, 20 pence per participant is what we've been charging up until January 2023. Now, if you're a current Pavlovia user, you will already have received an email from us uh, with this information. As of January 2023, we are changing our pricing structure um, slightly. So we'll be charging 1,800 uh, for a site license, again, unlimited. We hope that this will still be accessible to most people, but we are offering a 50% discount to that for institutes from emerging economies. So if you think that applies to you, or you think that applies to a researcher perhaps that you collaborate with who would like to use Pavlovia, um, but currently uh, cost is an issue there, then please do get in touch with us. We will also be continuing our, our credit approach as well. And everything that we will discuss today, so Pavlovia surveys, is included within the license crediting ecosystem that we're explaining here. So it's not an add-on based system. It's one price, uh, that's what you pay. You get the surveys, you get Pavlovia and everything. Um, so without further ado, how do you use Pavlovia surveys? What do they look like? So for this, I'm gonna deviate from my slides uh, in order to show you more dynamically what Pavlovia surveys look like. And I know a few of you mentioned that you've already been playing with Pavlovia surveys, which is great, thank you so much. And um, now if you want to, you can open this in your own browser to follow along if you want, or you can uh, just have a look as I make this here. So if you go to pavlovia.org, you will be taken to uh, our platform. 
You'll first of all need to sign in, which is what I am doing here. It is free to make a Pavlovia account, um, so there's no harm in having a look and exploring. When you do sign in, you'll be taken to your dashboard. Now, this is kind of the landing location where you're given information about your account. So I can see I'm logged in uh, as me, that I'm currently covered under a license with based at the University of Nottingham. And if you are a current PsychoPi Pavlovia user, you'll most of the time been going to this little tab here, uh, experiments. So this is where if you've created something in PsychoPi and put it on Pavlovia, they will have gone to this experiment section where you will have had then control about creating URLs for that experiment and so on and sharing them with participants. We're going to go to a different tab here. Uh, that is the surveys tab in order to make ourselves a survey. So if I select this, first of all, I'm presented with a table of all of the surveys that I've created. Now, most likely um, you will see a completely empty survey unless you've already been making surveys. Um, this is because I have not yet created a survey, but what I can do is I can have a look at this little access drop down and I can have a look by selecting shared any surveys that have been created by others with the intent of sharing them with me. So, for instance, here we have uh, the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index, which is what Wakefield will talk us through in a moment. Um, and you could, in theory, tick that and take a copy of that to then edit yourself. At the moment, I'm going to show you the basics of making an experiment from scratch, from the beginning. And in order to do that, what you'd want to do is you'd want to select a new survey. That would then add a row to your table of surveys here. You can select the survey name to give it a new, unique survey uh, name that you know. So I'm going to call it Ice Cream Survey. You can probably guess what I'm going to make my survey about today. Um, and then along here, I have information about that survey. So by default, my uh, the status of this is inactive. That means that I'm not currently gathering participants with this survey. I have information like a creation date, update de uh, date, who it was created by, do I own this? Do I have read access or do I have write access? So a write access would be Wakefield shared something with me and trusts me to make edits. Um, and then I have the number of complete and incomplete responses, which not surprising, I don't have any of those yet because I haven't yet edited my survey. Once I select that, I can open that and that's where I'm brought to this design uh, serve tab, this survey creator. And this is where we start putting together our surveys. So hopefully you can see we've got quite a large number of different response options available here. And um, we could get started making a survey either by dragging and dropping items into the creation space here, or we could just select add question, which is what I'm going to do here. We can get started maybe adding our uh, title to our survey. So I'll say uh, my ice cream survey. Maybe I want to add a little description, a survey about ice creams. And here I could also add a logo to present at the top of my survey. So maybe you don't use surveys in your research. Maybe you use mainly just experiments, but you probably have to present a consent form at the beginning of that. And in order to do that, most institutes also require you have an institutional logo. So you'd probably just want to select this and add yourself an institutional logo at the top of your experiment. Once you've got those kind of global settings down, you can just start adding questions. Um, so by default, this has added me a placeholder single input question. I'm going to do something a bit more interesting. So I'm going to select image picker. And that's added me some images that I could use, but my survey is about ice creams, not about animals. So I'm going to load in some pictures from my local computer that I've prepared in advance here. And then I'm going to change the phrasing of this question here to say, which is more appealing? Lovely. So there we go. I've got my first question, which is just asking the participant to select from one of four, one, one of four images. And if I click on that, I can then change um, various settings about that question using the right hand panel here. So I've got the name corresponding to that question. Now, this is the name that I will see in my data file. So I want it to be clear to me um, what question this is corresponding to. So I'll call that appeal. 
And um, then what I can also do if I scroll down is I can also control things about the choices. So I've given my name of my question a name, but what about the choices? If I select that, here you can see that the value for each of these images is currently still the defaults, lion, giraffe, panda, camel. Uh, I'm gonna change these so that they make sense to future me looking at my uh, data file. I'll say uh, vanilla. Ah. Nothing ruins spelling like presenting to a webinar live. Okay, uh, Sunday, and let's say this one here is a waffle comb. Lovely. Okay, so I've got my options. So that's a very basic question, but very often we want to have some kind of logical or conditional branching in our surveys. In this instance, imagine I only want to show this question if my participants actually like ice cream, there's no point presenting them questions if they say they don't like ice cream. So I'll start by inserting a little Boolean question here, meaning it's got only one or two options. Let's say, do you like ice cream? To which they can respond yes or no. And what, like before, I'll give this a logical name for myself, so like. And then I'm gonna use the answer from this to control if I present this question here. So in order to do that, let's click on the question that we want to have conditional uh, control over. I can scroll down on the right-hand side here and select logic. And here, there's a whole number of different ways in which we can apply logic to this uh, question. I want to control the visibility of this question based on previous answers. So I'll just select this little icon here. I can select the question that I'm looking at, so that is my like question. And if they say yes, then this is going to be visible. So it's quite simple to apply uh, that kind of logic in the survey creator. Okay, so in theory, I've got that ready, but I wanna preview what that would look like for my participant. So what I can do to that, do that is I can set this preview tab here. By default, that will show me what this would look like on a laptop screen, uh, just a normal desktop. But what about if I'm going to share this with people with phones? I can select on the right hand side here which kind of device do I want to uh, test this on? Let's say an iPhone 6. This is what it would look like in landscape mode. Let's look in portrait. This is what it would look like in portrait mode. Yes, I can see my images here. And then I click complete. So in theory, I'm happy with how that looks on both a laptop and on an iPhone 6 in this case. Just to walk through these other tabs here, we've also got logic so that you can see in one place all of the logic that you currently have applied to your survey. And there's also a JSON editor. So uh, John mentioned that this uh, tool is based on SurveyJS, which is an open source JavaScript package for creating surveys. This is what we call a SurveyJS JSON. You can actually, um, what's a little bit different to if you're used to working in PsychoPy, here, you can edit the JSON and changes are reflected back in the designer tab. So it's a two way relationship. Um, so, for instance, here I can see I've forgotten to add a question mark to the end of this. Do you like ice cream question? So I add a question mark, go back to my designer tab. And there I can see that that question mark has indeed been added. What's nice here is that if you want to, uh, say, import that JSON to use it in a different spreadsheet, you can always do that at any point. You can download um, your current uh, survey model, so the JSON, um, and import it when you initially create your survey. And Wakefield's gonna talk through that import a little bit more because you can also do that with Qualtrics QSF files if you're currently using Qualtrics. Okay, so I've made myself my experiment. Now I want to release it to the world. In order to do that, I'm gonna go uh, to my overview tab on the top left-hand corner here. This screen, if you're already a Pavlovia user, will look very familiar. If you're not already a Pavlovia user, the things to know here is that we have three statuses. Your survey in this case can have an inactive status, meaning you are not currently gathering um, anything, any information from participants. You can then change it to piloting if you just wanna test out how that looks yourself by sending yourself a pilot link. And to generate that pilot link, you can click pilot survey. That will create yourself a link where you can try your uh, experiment. Importantly, if you're running on a credit-based system and not a license-based system, 
running in pilot mode doesn't use a credit. So you can try things out without it consuming those credits. Once you're happy with that, you can set your uh, survey to running and that will generate you a URL that you can share with participants. Uh, now, I'm rather hopeful here that I can share this link with you so I can get some responses. What I am going to do before I share that link is just highlight this section here where you can see that you can also redirect your participant to a different link depending on when they if they complete the survey or if they do not complete the survey. So if they press the escape key to cancel, for example, what this means is if you've got a survey that is going to precede an experiment, for example, you might have a Pavlovia experiment where you've got, uh, say you want a consent form survey, then your Pavlovia experiment, you just put the link to that uh, in here. And Wakefield is going to talk through some more advanced features of daisy chaining, as we call this in a moment. Okay, so I'm going to release my survey to the world. Let's see how we go. I'm going to add a link in the chat. Sorry, everyone, the chat's disabled for all of you, but not for me. I have the power of the Zoom chat. Um, so please do uh, fill out my survey. Tell me which ice cream you like and if you do like ice cream or not. And then what I'm going to do is I'll show you where you get your responses. OK, that's a rather quick survey. So I'm hoping most of you have probably already completed it. So if you have and you've found your way back to the Zoom, um, I'm going to show you where you would then look at your results. So this is this final tab here, your responses tab. At the moment I have no responses, that's rather disappointing, but I can just refresh this screen and then hopefully look at that. Lot of lovely responses. I can look at individual responses here um, if I want to. But if I want to look at all my participants together, I can select download responses. And that will store me a CSV where I have one column per question, one row per participant. So for instance, here I have the appeal question where I can see what everyone's answering. Lots of people like in a waffle ice cream. Um, you've got the response time to that question and you've also got uh, whether you like or do not like ice cream as well. I'm just going to save that as my own. Okay. So at that point, that's kind of our basic run through of creating surveys. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to uh, Wakefield Morris Carter now to talk through some of the more advanced features of surveys. Okay. Hello, everyone. So um, when I'm not a um, psychology, uh, sorry, when I'm not a science officer working for Open Science Tools, uh, I'm a science officer, psychology demonstrator working for Oxford Brooks. Sorry, trying to talk while sharing screen. Um, okay, so um, at Oxford Brooks, I've been using Psychopy and supporting it with dissertation students and staff for nearly 10 years. And I've also been using Qualtrics, so Psychopy primarily for experiments and Qualtrics for uh, surveys. And so what I wanted to um, show you here today was a particular survey that I've used over many years uh, that's quite complex. And um, so I've ended up making a, um, a template for our students to use. So if I flick through um, to this tab, here we're looking at the preview of the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index um, on um, Qualtrics. And it's got some questions which require an answer in terms of time. What time do you have you usually gone to bed at night? What time do you usually get up? Uh, and in previous versions of this survey, uh, some students have just had an open text box here, which is problematic because people type it in, type in answers in different ways. And so the students have tended to have to rescore everything manually. So, in, uh, so more recently, I've adopted this uh, drop down where you've got uh, one drop down for the hours and one drop down for the minutes. Uh, later, this also has a matrix table, which is very useful, uh, uh, very common in um, many surveys and uh, some other types, including there is some uh, display logic. So on this last question, do you have a bed partner or a roommate? If you say that you do, then the survey updates and shows you an extra set of questions. 
Now, uh, in order to create this in Pavlovia surveys, uh, I didn't want to start from scratch. So instead, what I wanted to do was import the Qualtrics file. So what I did is go to um, my Qualtrics account. Uh, I'm in the uh, editor here, go to tools, uh, export, import, import, export, and export survey. And that downloads a QSF file. And if I then go back to my Pavlovia survey dashboard, I can now click on import surveys and then drag that QSF file. We've got um, some messages to say whether it, how long it's taken, whether there's any serious errors, uh, everything looks good. So I'll then click import surveys. And at the top of my uh, list of surveys, I've now got a new survey uh, with today's date. So I'll click on it and open it. And then uh, if I go to, um, well, we can see now we've got these questions um, brought in. And also if I click on the logic tab, we can see that there's that logic of uh, if you um, say that you've got a partner, then you get an extra question visible. Now, in uh, best uh, blue piece of tradition, uh, here's one I made earlier because what I wanted to do is go to is um, go further than uh, what I already had in Qualtrics and use some of the extra power of Pavlovia surveys to um, score this uh, sleep quality index live. So uh, in the past, what I've uh, done with students is we've downloaded the data and then uh, I've helped them uh, score the seven subscales and one overall all scale uh, in either SPSS or Jamovi. But uh, we can use in uh, Pavlovia surveys an extra type of question called an expression question where you can do calculations. And uh, now I could... Uh, if I just go to the design, then uh, I can show you um, how I've created it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go into detail of that now, well, but later I will share this with you so that you can look at it yourself. Instead, uh, what I'm going to do is take you through it as a participant. But not just any participant, what I've uh, wanted to do was show how we can link it with um, another system. At Oxford Brooks, we, uh, our first years have to take part in studies and we use SONAR systems, which is a very popular system for assigning credits. And so I've uploaded uh, the um, Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index, PSQI, as an external, uh, an online external study on our SONAR system. And I can then test it out using a sample link with an embedded ID code. And what we need is for Sona to be able to send a code to the survey and then at the end of the survey that code to be sent back so you get the credit. So if I now click on this sample link then we start off with um, a page that I've added to the survey, uh, a simple participant information sheet um, and uh, we're looking at here two questions. The first one is um, what you, an HTML question, but it's a question that isn't really a question. You can't actually answer it. Uh, it's used in Pavlovia surveys to show formatted text. So I've got bolds and uh, italics, uh, setting up the PI sheet as I want. And then I've got a checkbox type question for consent. Uh, at Oxford Books, we just have a straight, if you consent, then you can proceed. And if you don't consent, then uh, you're stuck there. So if I just click start here, I've added a custom message to say that if uh, this is a required question and if you don't fill it in, then you'll get this uh, message. Please consent to participate if you wish to proceed. Um, this question also, this um, consent uh, question, I uh, in Pavlovia surveys, I disabled showing the question. So it's got the checkbox and it's got the text for that checkbox, but there's nothing above it. Um, in Qualtrics, what I'd have to do is I'd have to have a 
question that was just a kind of space so that nothing came up on screen. So I'll click yes and click start. Okay, and so now we have um, the same question, the same style of surveys we had before. I've um, added various items as being required. So for example, here for usual bedtime, I've said that you must put in the hours, but you don't have to put in the minutes. And then how long does it take you to fall asleep? Okay, so I'm going to put, let's say, 40 minutes. Now, as soon as I've answered 40 minutes for um, this question two, uh, a what I've called a hidden calculation has turned up. So here we've got uh, the conversion for the PSQI of uh, how long it takes you to uh, fall asleep into the final scoring, just using some nested if statements. If it's greater than 60 minutes, then you get three or two if it's greater than 30, one if it's greater than 15 or zero, zero being no sleep problems. Now, this is an expression question. And uh, one of the options is that you can say whether you want the expression to be visible or not. So if you were, do if you were actually using this survey, then uh, you wouldn't want that calculation visible. But obviously here I'm doing it for demo purposes, so I've got the calculations visible. Then I'll put a getting up time. Uh, again, we've got um, numbers hours spent in bed, so a new calculation that takes into account the hours and minutes. How long have you spent to sleep? Um, okay, uh, at the moment it's calculating an efficiency of over 100, uh, which does happen in the uh, uh, in the data that I've seen from students. And so I've added something that we'll come back to later uh, of an error check. Then matrix table. So I'll just fill in some answers here. The last answer where there's an other reason I'm using display logic, that if I click other, then I get a please describe box of uh, what is that other reason. Whereas if I go back to just asking, saying it's not during the past month, then uh, that disappears again. More of these calculations coming in. Okay, so let's uh, answer some more. Okay, and again, here we've got that display logic of the table either appearing or disappearing. The global P PSQI, the global score is the sum of the old, all the components. However, I've then put in an error check at the end. Please check your answers. You said that you sleep for 10 hours, but you only spend uh, 8.58 in bed. And also a, a message about... Um, so a good sleeper is a global PSQI of greater than, of less than six. So if I go up and change my hours in bed, oh, sorry, hours of sleep, say change it to six, then now my global PSQI is now up to seven and uh, I'm getting the message of being a poor sleeper. Now I'll click next. And I've ended on some um, demographics. I've added some timing here. So this timing, again, uh, it happens automatically, but I've clicked it so that uh, it's visible. And we've got the time spent per page and also the time spent in total. I uh, told Pavlovia surveys that the um, participant information sheet was not part of the survey. And so the timing didn't start until, so the overall time didn't start until I'd um, uh, consented. So I haven't got these as, uh, as required questions. So I'm now going to just click complete. And uh, the redirection has now come through to our Sona system. Uh, we can't see the redirection URL because it's been hidden, but what I can see in this system message is no credit given because I'm not a participant, but it's correctly guess picking up the study name, Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index, and that's the message that tells me that the redirection works, that the um, code that went through was the correct one, it's been correctly received. Um, and that redirection, if I go back to the survey, 
I go to the overview here. So it was on, uh, on the overview page, I've got an experiment flow, uh, the place that I'm going, and then survey code equals at the end. And then I've just got participant, which is the incoming URL code uh, in curly brackets. And that's all we need for the, uh, for the daisy chaining. Now, uh, finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this survey with you. So I'll go back to my dashboard and find the um, Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index, click the checkbox at the end, share selected surveys, and give everybody read access. So I just click on every designer and then share surveys. And that should mean that uh, if you're trying uh, Pavlovia surveys out now, then you should be able to now see that you might need to uh, click refresh here to refresh your list of surveys. Okay, and unless I've forgotten anything, then I think at this point I'm going to hand back to Rebecca. Great, thank you very much, Wake. Okay. Fantastic. So hopefully now you have seen some of the, uh, the basics of getting started in using Pavlovia surveys, as well as some of the more advanced features that we have to offer at the moment. Um, so I want to just end on talking about some of the things that either currently already exist or the things that are just around the corner uh, in shaping this research tool. So the first thing that we would uh, that we're hoping for in the very near future is full integration with PsychoPy. So if you are creating an experiment using the PsychoPy application, it might be that you wish to actually embed your survey within that experiment at a certain point. Imagine you're gathering aesthetic judgments on a work of art or something like that. You've got a, your picture on the side, your survey on the left or something like that. Um, so we're hoping for that to be possible in the near future. At the moment, if you're running an experiment alongside a survey, you would follow the daisy chaining procedure um, that Wakefield has outlined there with, so with Sonar as an example. We'll also be continuously improving our Qualtrics QSF converter. So this is a feature that we're very excited about because we think uh, lots of people have QSF files that they are already using. Um, with their, their surveys they've created in Qualtrics. If you want to have a go at using Pavlovia surveys, but you want, don't want to have to recreate that survey from scratch, just being able to import the Qualtrics QSF file is, is really handy and convenient. Um, and this is something that will continuously improve so that we can make life as easy as possible for people. I did see someone ask a question in the Q&A about counterbalancing, um, and this is actually what this point relates towards. So Pavlovia does currently have a shelf feature. Um, when I was scanning along those tabs there uh, on my dashboard where there was experiments and then I quickly moved on to surveys, shelf is on there just before the surveys tab. And this is what we currently have as our mechanism for enabling uh, automated control of counterbalancing in online experiments. Um, at the moment, this isn't yet uh, fully integrated with surveys, but it's something that we hope to have in place uh, very, very soon. Um, so that should be easy for you to do, yes. In terms of what else and where the development goes, uh, we're very, very keen on things being user driven here. So you tell us, um, please interact with our forum, discourse.psychopi.org. There is a survey section on that forum. Um, anything you post, please do make sure you post to that section and we'll be keeping an eye out on that. If there's a feature um, of the existing tool that you might be using or moving away for for whatever reason, and you think that's the game changer for me, please let us know, because uh, that's the kind of information that we want to know to, to make things as useful as possible. If you want to hear more or you've come to this webinar and you think my, de my department might like to hear about this, um, but obviously not everyone could attend uh, three o'clock on a Friday or always or, or, or whatever time it is in the world with you. We do have free departmental demos. Feel free to get in touch. Uh, we can do these virtually over Zoom. Uh, if you're nearby, we could even come in person and, and say hello. So uh, do let us know. We also offer three day workshops that cover Psychopy and Pavlovia more generally. We've just run one on the UK time zone. In fact, I can see some names here of people that were in that workshop. <laughs> 
Hello, everyone. Um, we've got our next one in November uh, on US East Coast time zone. Um, so we have those regularly now. So thank you very much um, to all of you for attending this webinar session. I also just want to reiterate what John said at the start of this in terms of thanking the team members that have been very involved in, in creating this tool. So in particular, Alan and Nikita uh, and also Wakefield for rigorously testing um, this framework as well. Um, at this point, we will be uh, answering some of the questions in the Q&A. Um, we might uh, pick on some of you if you're happy to turn on your mic. Uh, to also ask those um, in person. If you'd like to ask a question over the mic also, please do just put up your hand and we'll work around as many of those questions um, as possible. Uh, so thank you very much. Let's see what we've got in the q and I'll stop sharing my screen for a moment. Okay. Um, so the top one here uh, regarding counterbalancing, hopefully uh, we've answered the question there with regards to shelf. Before I do kind of move on from that one, does anyone else in the team here have anything you'd like to say in response to that one? Uh, actually, I was hoping that you might say a bit about the um, what's currently possible with the shelf, because you created a small experiment. Oh, yes, that's true. <laughs> so you can actually uh, make an ex a PsychoPi experiment that fetches the values from the shelf and then send the participant to your survey and use that. Uh, so it is possible, it's just at the moment you'd weirdly have the experiment first and then the survey. Um, we do have a demo uh, of that that I can seek out and share in the chat. I don't have it immediately to hand Wakefield, I'm afraid, but yeah. it is a possibility. Yes, thank you for reminding me. Okay, so there is a question here on will there be an API to automatically download data from the questionnaire? Uh, this is probably one for Nikita or Alan, if either of you would like to answer that for us, please. Alan, uh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, yes, so this is one of the features that we are currently working on. We have a uh, prototype that is able to handle multiple blocks and randomization and a relatively complex flow across blocks. Uh, we are currently heavily testing it and, and we hope to be able to make it available to everyone very, very soon. So it's very much a watch this space. Lovely. Thank you very much, Alan. Um, I can see Nikita is typing responses to this final type question here. So I can see a couple of people with their hands mm, up. Yeah. Sorry if about that. This, this was the reason why I was quiet. Sorry. Yeah, I was answering the no question difference. regarding the expressions. So expressions are handled by ServiceJS platform. So they have their own embedded uh, expression language. So you, if you want to know more about that, please go ahead and check out their website and sections. Find their sections about expressions and you're going to, you're going to know what 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 it's like great thank you nikita yeah. maybe um, I okay in, oh, sorry maybe i can just pop in and answer the question about about gdpr because this crops up um, quite a bit so um yeah this is all on pavlovia the same as psychopi and psychojs experiments that we've been processing through pavlovia already um we've got lots of institutions that are in the eu and need DPAs, um, so that's data processing agreements. We can we can handle all of that. The the um, the server and all of all of the technologies that we use are fully GDPR compliant. The servers themselves are in the EU, and uh, you know we've we've been through a lot of that documentation with a lot of people. Um, so we're quite happy to provide those as you need them. Feel free just to get in touch on sales open science tools org. And, and we can send you a DPA, or if you need something else, um, then then just let us know. Great, thank you, John. Um, okay, I'm gonna pick on some people with their hands up. I can see two hands at the moment. Um, first, uh, Dr. Charles Cuey, please could, uh, I'll give you the ability to talk, first of all. There we go. Okay, please could you turn on your mic and ask your question? Hello, can you hear me? Hi. Yes, Hello, we can hear you. Hello, thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, this is very <coughs> impressive, exciting uh, seminar. Again, uh, my same question <coughs> I put in, um, in the question answer message box. Um, can Pavlovia survey handle random assignment of participants to different stimuli, such as the ice cream example you showed us, without using psychopi? My question is that um, if I tell my colleague you have learned psychopi, that might put off some people on a particular short term, like a one year uh, typical British style uh, master degree of the students, uh, put them off. So I'm wondering if for the Pavlovia survey itself can handle random assignment, that would be fantastic. Thank you, Charles. Um, Wayfield, I see you've got your mic on. Did do you want to answer this one? Or? Um, sorry, that, I failed to turn my mic off. Um, yeah, the random, I've not yet managed to get random happening within a survey. And so uh, this is a, you know, uh, this is something that I guess we're going to be sorting very soon and uh, uh, probably with random assignment using the shelf as you've described, but that's going to be soon, not not today. It would be the sort of thing, though, that within PsychoPy, um, you could set up very easily if, if that was if you literally just wanted to randomize um, between a couple of different surveys. Once we've once we've added that survey option into PsychoPy into its flow. Um, we'll make sure that's a, a relatively easy thing to do. So it's not like they've got to create lots of stuff within PsychoPy, but, but um, it, we'll be able to make that small. But also we'll look into ways to make it possible um, on, the, on the surveys platform itself, yeah. Thank you very much. Just, just, yeah, to, just... just to add one more thing there. Um, so one thing that you can also do is you can actually feed in a group in the URL at the beginning of your experiment. So let's say, for instance, um, I know Charles, we've spoken about this, this previously, but in this example, let's say I wanted to either present images of chocolate ice cream or of vanilla ice cream. Now what I could do that is now uh, fully functional is in my uh, link to my URL. Perhaps I will just demonstrate that here. If I share my screen once more, um, here we go. Um, so I've got my experiment here. Uh, you've seen that this is how I generate my link here. What I can do is I can feed in a value into that query string here. So I've already got one query string parameter. So I've got question mark survey ID and my survey ID. I can also say and group equals. And I believe either Alan or Nikita will jump in if I'm getting this wrong here, but let's say it was chocolate it would be inside our curly brackets here. Please do interrupt me if I am wrong. Group, I remove the spaces. And group is spelled wrong. There we go. What did I say? Nothing ruins spelling like a live webinar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so then this would be a variable that you can now use in your experiment, uh, in, in your survey even. So in exactly the same way as how in that basic example, we said only show this image, if they said yes to the first question, you'd use the same logic. So just remembering what the logic looks like here. If I go down to this question, pop, go down to this, the screen a little bigger, there we go. So you would use this logic, except it would be in here, group equals chocolate. And then that would mean that that image with chocolate would be presented. So this isn't handling the random group assignment, However, it is meaning that you can very easily run two groups from the same survey, have those responses from that survey go to the same data file. And then you can use uh, perhaps in the very near future, this integration with shelf uh, to randomly assign um, to one of those groups. So that's that shelf feature uh, that I did mention at the end there. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the shelf feature. Certainly from my experience, uh, I'm just uh, I'm teaching the data analytics module for the level seven or master degree <clears throat> course, and uh, I can see the this uh, Pavlovian uh, survey 
I can, it's already ready, available for our students' use. No doubt about that. I have no doubt about that. Just for more academic, uh, comprehensive, uh, you know, uh, for publication yeah. purposes, uh, we, I hope we can get <laughs> this available uh, in the near future. But thanks very much. This is a wonderful tool. And certainly I will highly, I'm not thinking to send a message now since I've been in this mm -hmm. seminar, I've been to the workshops. I'm going to send a message to our university's uh, finance office first. <laughs> That's the where they control the money. And uh, yeah. to see whether we can uh, set up a demo uh, to invite you guys to, to come over. Um, I will keep you posted. Thanks, Charles. That's great. Thanks, Charles. So we've got a question Thanks. there from Yanis as well. Yep. So I will, one moment, I think I can give. Ayanis, the the power to talk. I did it already, I think. Okay. You did it already. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, Any co-hosts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can hear you. Ah, excellent. Thank you very much for for the webinar, and uh, um, I'm really looking forward for for the service uh, uh, to be finalized. Um, um, I have tested, uh, I think, all the question types you have on the survey labs, and I try to provide some comments on that. One of the things that I tried to do first was to try to create a random number uh, for pseudo-anonymization purposes. This is quite common, I think, in most surveys where you present a random number, uh, at least what we're doing in Qualtrics. Um, and this is when um, uh, things went a little bit down. <laughs> Uh, so I went to the survey JS website uh, on the forum and see what other people did. And apparently you have to register a, fun a JavaScript function to the function factory and blah, blah, which I don't understand. Um, and then I said, okay, I'll just copy paste as a, a good, you know, <laughs> as a good uh, technician I am. I'll just copy paste from the web, from the web uh, on my survey. And of course it didn't work because further down in other posts, what I realized is that you guys that host the server.js platform, you have to actually create these functions for the rest of us to use. Am I correct in my thinking? That is correct, absolutely. And so, in fact, it's one of those um, additional functions that we will be adding. So there's, uh, we are collecting a list of those functions, in particular, following up upon you know, your feedback. And, and so we will be adding them to the survey little by little and, and make them available to the people. We are also preparing a page, obviously, uh, to communicate with, with everyone what it is that is available, what is we are currently working on, what are those features which are coming up again in an interest of having you help us prioritize and decide what it is that uh, where, where we should actually put our, our efforts next. Excellent, thank you. And a last question, when do you expect for the surveys uh, feature to be out of beta? And just we can start collecting data. I is there a timeline for that? Uh, well, well, we'll be better than Google, uh, <laughs> I can tell you that. Um, so we, we just launched, basically. So I, I would imagine that uh, the next month will be very, uh, there will be a lot of, of development. There will be a lot of new features. In particular, we, we're hoping to have complex flows um, fully tested and, and available to everyone, which will make it possible to, we hope, import most Qualtrics experiments, or at least most parts of most Qualtrics experiments. Uh, so what I would anticipate is that, you know, by Christmas, we will be in a very good place where we will have advanced features as well as quite a bit of testing under our belt. Uh, so that it seems reasonable that basically that would be, you know, the start of the year with uh, a, a survey which is not in beta version. Until then, even though we have not encountered problem with loss of data, um, it's, it would be difficult for us to remove the beta sticker just because it is rapidly evolving. So that's, that's sure. roughly the reason why it's there. We've not really done that before, but so this is an exciting feature and it's very, very rapidly evolving. So we are keeping it beta for a few weeks. Uh, but already I think it's, it's very usable. Like I said, we have not experienced any kind of failure to collect the data. But I want to be, we want to be, you know, uh, to keep it safe and, and make sure that people uh, are mostly, you know, developing with it rather than really relying upon it to collect participant results for their actual experiments. Cool. Thank you very much, uh, all of you. Thank you. I think I would say, though, to add to that, you know, if you try, I mean, test out that your 
um, survey works the way you expect, you're going to see if it doesn't work the way you expect um, on, on the whole. So I would say try that out. I mean, the, I, I suppose there are use cases around you may discover that participants on some particular device um, then have trouble and you haven't tested that device. But um, on the whole, I would have thought you can, you, you're going to get to know fairly quickly if there's, if there's a problem, I would say try it out with 10 participants if that all works. Feel free to go ahead and, and collect, a, you know, collect a, a, an expanded study. You know, just because there's a beta sticker there doesn't mean that you're going to get invalid answers, right? It's not going to, I don't know, accidentally invert all of the yeses to nos. So um, I think I think you should, you can be reasonably confident. What you're going to find is that either it doesn't work for your particular use case yet, um, or or after testing um, a smaller number of participants, you find it's working just fine. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, right. So I'm, I'm just trying to uh, answer live for the anonymous attendee, which means that I'm, they might need to stick their hand up if they need to clarify. But uh, this could be either uh, can the participant answer using a file, in which case there is a file upload feature, or I think maybe what the question is is uh, if you've got a whole bunch of questions, can you put them straight into Pavlovia surveys, uh, copy and paste, rather than having to put each one separately? And the answer to that second one is, is yes, there is a um, a way of, in fact, should I just, uh, why don't I just share my screen just in case it is that. So let me just, because it's, it's definitely a useful feature to know about. Uh, Okay, share screen. Okay, so if I just go to um, one of these questions, and then uh, on the right hand side, if I go on choices, then I can tick this box and paste in basically the, the value of each choice. So that's what, what it would be coded as. And then a, I guess it's a pipe symbol, a, a vertical line, and then the text. So that's what the participant sees. And so it would be very easy to, um, to set up in a, in a text editor, for example, to take a whole list of choices and a whole list of uh, texts and um, insert that pipe and paste them in. And I hope that answers the question. Fantastic. Thank you, Wakefield. Um, dare I say, I, I think I can't see any more questions in the Q&A box. And there's no more hands raised at the moment. If you have a question, now is the chance. I'll wait a few moments. <laughs> Okay, um, well, thank you once again, everyone for attending this webinar today. We hope that it's been useful. If you'd like us to come and show it to your department, let us know, get in touch. Um, and yeah, keep us posted on the forum how you get on using Pavlovia surveys. Thank you, everybody. Thanks everyone for coming. Stop the recording. Thank you. Thank you.